Now I'm joined by LK, who is the taxidermist behind the exhibition's incredible white-tailed eagle specimens. So how did you come to be working with these animals? So the NHM reached out to me um, late of last year and asked me if I wanted to be part of the project, which was, it's just a dream come true really, to be affiliated with such an esteemed organisation. And uh, part of the project was obviously to do these eagles, which has been Again, they're such rare and unusual specimens, so it's been a real pleasure. It's incredible to see them out on display. They really do look spectacular. I had no idea we had such big birds in the UK. We are so lucky to have such a beautiful array of specimens in that exhibition, so people can really connect to the wildlife that we have on our coasts here in the UK. And it's a fantastic way to get to see them. And Joe was explaining to us that these birds came to you from Sweden. So I was wondering if you could just briefly talk us through the process of once they arrived, what do you do first? OK, so they came in partly defrosted. Usually I'd get the specimen completely frozen. And then we extract the skin from the carcass. Once we have the skin removed from the carcass, we use the carcass to take our anatomically accurate measurements that inform our model. We then process the skin, make sure it's clean of any fascia, sinew, any organic material that might rot or decompose, and then we preserve the skin. So we use a whole assortment of various chemicals um, to make sure that skin changes from an organic thing to something that is stable, like a material. Once we have the preserved skin, we have our model made. We can harmoniously combine the two, dress the preserved skin over the model and have a piece of taxidermy. Are there any steps in that process that you find to be particularly delicate or difficult? It's something that can't really be put into a physical motion and that is translating bird behaviour. So understanding birds, understanding their nuances, the characteristics that make each different type of bird species specific. So for example, the way that an ostrich might hold its neck is not going to be the same that a finch might hold its neck. And understanding those adaptations that try to translate its behavior, its personality, I think that is the most delicate art. And what kind of tools and chemicals are you using in this process? Technique has changed quite a lot over the years. Taxidermists used to use chemicals that we would consider quite harsh and quite noxious. So now we're using things like camphor, borax, we're using a specially built compound by a taxidermy company and uh, luckily most of the chemicals that we use are safe and are perfectly fine for people to be around. What was it that first kind of made you interested in taxidermy as a profession? So a lot of people find that a dead animal is something quite macabre but for me I find it to be something quite enchanting because it can be a mouthpiece, it can communicate and it can be a, an educational opportunity and uh, I think that that is one of the greatest gifts of taxidermy is it speaks to a much bigger conversation about protecting our natural world, protecting our climate and connecting to animals. Do you have to have certain kind of tricks for making a specimen whole if when it comes to you pieces are missing? So we often use different specimens to make one perfect specimen, so a hybrid, and we'll use one bird as a donor if it ha has perhaps some trauma to its head, let's say we're talking about buzzard, and it comes in, it's, it's had some trauma, maybe it was the uh, result of a road traffic accident, and then we'll take the head off and we'll use another bird of the same type, same kind of age, same sort of size, and try to create a harmonious specimen. If the process of bacteria growth, so decomposition has started, sometimes actually you're not really able to do much more than just say this bird is not suitable for taxidermy. If there are people watching who are interested in kind of getting into taxidermy, do you have any recommended like reads or documentaries they could check out? A great film to watch would be Stuffed, the documentary. Basically follows uh, taxidermists of the modern day in their everyday lives and Different taxidermists have different orientations. Some people hunt, some people you know, are very anti-hunting, some people work with museums, some people work just as artists. I host a mentorship platform um, online. People can join and it's a safe place for people to kind of engage and critique, learn to share resources, share PDFs and that sort of thing. And there's lots, if you look for it, you can find it. And you know, we're really excited to have people join our industry all the time. So it's open and people are welcome. Fantastic. And if people want to follow your work along specifically, do you have a website they can visit? Yeah, so most of my work, my portfolio is on my website at um, lktaxidermy.co.uk or my Instagram, lktaxidermy. Amazing. Thank you so much for that dive into taxidermy. It was fascinating to learn more. And you can see Elle's incredible white-tailed eels on display at Birds the Exhibition.